Hi and welcome to Inspiring Artists Worth Studying. Today I'm going to be talking about Bruce Tim. Hi, my name is Luis Escobar. I'm a storyboard artist on the Simpsons television show. I've been working on the show for over 25 years now and I'm here to empower you. So uh, Bruce Tim, the last couple of videos I've, I've talked about Jack Kirby and then I talked about Jim Steranko. Uh, the the artists that I've been talking about have gotten are kind of heavily influenced by Kirby and then from Kirby have have taken that and, and done their own thing plus on top of that uh, they've also inspired their own people and Bruce Tim is heavily highly inspirational to other artists there's a lot of other artists who have uh, been inspired by him and his and, and, and we're gonna actually be talking about some of them after this but Today we're going to be talking about Bruce Tim, who uh, he himself is inspired by Kirby and a bunch of other people. Uh, Dan DiCarlo is another one that I haven't spoken about, but uh, he's heavily influential on me, especially when it comes to drawing uh, cartoon girls. Okay, so uh, let's take a look at some Bruce Tim art and talk about what makes him unique. At the same time, what, how he's influenced also by Jack Kirby. So here we have a drawing of Batman uh, fighting a giant, very, very, very Kirby cr uh, creature. So here we have the 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 Kirby zigzags, the the, the Kirby lightning bolts, uh, Kirby designs with the circles and the and the straight lines here. Kirby shadows and shadow shapes. All of this is all very Jack Kirby, but what makes it Bruce Tim is that Bruce Tim has gotten to this kind of f finessed version of anatomy, very cartoon, cartoony anatomy, very streamlined forms. So for example, we, we could take a look at this Batman here. And notice that Batman has his exterior lines are extremely simple. Look at this. Look at this. It's just one straight line, and then there's a straight here. So this is a slight curve, and then there's a straight. Here's almost. This is a straight, and then this is a curve, or an S curve, right here. Uh, here's a C curve. Here's a different C curve, but the C curves are off center like this. Uh, we've got here, we have a C curve here, we have an S curve here. And so it's not repetitive, but also is is unifying and, and, and it goes in, in, in this very specific direction. Uh, we have, a, we have a, a C curve and then we have a counter C curve, which is, I guess, an S curve here. We have C curve and an S curve here. But these, but this isn't quite a Michelin man. It isn't quite a football. It's still a little bit off center. Uh, here again, C curve, S curve, S curve, S curve. But this, these two S curves are very, very different. This is much more of an extreme in, interior line than this one here, which is a very mild S curve. So it creates an off-center design and it makes it more organic. And that's kind of what you want. You don't want your characters to look like football. You don't want your muscles to look like football footballs because muscles actually don't aren't footballs they don't they don't they're, they're not Michelin man you're not drawing a, 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 a snowman you're not drawing snowman muscles muscles tend to be off-center they tend to be a little bit off like this uh, it, it's part of the organic flow of the body and uh, Bruce Tim actually does that a lot and he even simplifies it to the point where you've got this leg and it's just one almost straight line. It's a very mild S curve, but it might as well be a straight line. And then this is this S curve here, and it peaks up here, while this one kind of peaks around here, right? And then it S curves here, and then this is just a C curve. These two are C curves here, but this C curve is wider and it peaks higher than this one, which is more shallow. S curve, C curve. And most of the stuff that he does is is in this kind of design. Straight, straight, C curves, C curves, uh, S curves sometimes or most of the time or uh, depending on whether or not the, the, there's going to be an organic 
uh, element here. But uh, the entire, but this again, and then yet the whole thing is very Kirby-esque calligraphy. Another very Kirby-esque calligraphy, but it's really, really, really pushed. And this is the, the it's, it's pushed and simplified at the same time. By pushed, I mean the shapes are pushed. Uh, he, it, it's, it's boom, 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 boom. Very, very simple. Two, two straights here, but they're, but they're, see, even when you have two straights, uh, they're, but they're not parallel. They're slightly coming together like this, which makes it for much more interesting design than having it be straight up and down, uh, straight uh, parallel. Uh, then we've got this this one line that comes all the way down. Notice that there there is no cut. There is no uh, stopping throughout this whole thing. It's just one full clean line all the way down. And there's a C curve here and an S curve, and it goes back to a C curve over here. It's 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 two S curves kind of put together. This is one giant C curve, and here there is a stop. Look, it go it comes in. There's a this interior C curve stop. Then we go into this out exterior C curve, and then it goes into this S curve in here. Uh, you could basically, as shown here, you can make an entire do an entire drawing with only three lines: straights, C curves, S curves. That's it. And uh, you've got it. And Bruce Tim is a master of illustrating this point because he simplifies things to such an extent that uh, he's able to do these beautiful designs while at the same time uh, making it look very complex because look at these black shapes the way that these black shapes are put together but and and the contrast between the black and the white shapes and then the, even within the white shapes there's slightly off centeredness there's 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 a little bit of variation in there uh, you're 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 making you're, you're adding interesting shapes um, and and they're all inspired by kirby shapes which makes them very interesting, very unique, very beautiful. Um, so you 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 can take the Kirby thing, and then and then stylize it even more and simplify it even more so that it's not too lumpy bumpy or whatever it is, and you can make it really cartoony and yet it it adds so much life. And Bruce Tim is a master at showing you how to do that. This is, you know, even the, the, the very, very Kirby machines here, very Kirby pose with the arm coming out. But notice that his have blocky fingers. It's like he took Kirby and like just reduced it to its essence, right? Uh, the, and, and, and at the same time, simplified and, and clarified a lot of the things that, that Kirby probably would have added a little bit more lumpy bumps. Uh, Bruce Tim tends to really simplify it and streamline it so that it's, it adds even more clarity uh, to, uh, to a character. So look at, look at this human torch. There's one single line that goes all the way down. There is no stopping. It just goes all the way through. It's one line. Uh, a lot of people would want to break that up and, and start and stop it. There is something very clear and very, very uh, appropriate to just having it just one thing. It, it, it reads more, it gives it that much more power instead of having your eyes stop on muscles all the way down. Look, the, here's, a, here's a very complex C curve ending in an S curve here. And then we've got a C curve over here. And this is a shallower C curve, almost a straight compared to this, which peaks way up here. Then we've got an S curve here, making this off center. S, uh, C curve here, S curve here. So that that S curve, C curve dynamic makes it makes it that much more organic. Um, he also tends to do this sort of thing where it's straight versus C curve or S curve. So this straight versus C curve or S curve is also a very Bruce Tim thing, and he tends to. He, he will eventually, this is like an older drawing, as he moved along, he started almost getting away from doing the S curves and only implementing C curves in, in I mean, uh, straights in, in a lot of his drawings. 
but uh, again, this this shape goes all the way down. Like it's just one S curve, like C curve, and then there's like a slight S curve, and then this is just a C curve straight here. C curve here, C curve here into an S curve. Uh, there's an S curve in here too, so I should say there's two offset S curves in that drawing. C curve here, then an S curve. C curve, C curve, counteracting like this, counterbalance. Straight, there's just a straight right here, another straight. Uh, so this, it's just really, really fantastic stuff. This, the, this face, look how simple the faces are, by the way. And it's not there, and they're also uh, anatomically sound. Like this muscle that like, does come in and around and through, right? It, 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 this is the cheekbone, but there's a muscle that goes in through, and it comes in, and it does this, and it goes all the way down. So it, it, it wraps around. Uh, the the face the faces are very Dan De Carlo, very cute, um, uh, especially with with women. He has the dot. Dan DiCarlo uh, had a, had like a little little um, a bit of a I don't know a, a a round triangular shape for the bottom of the nose. He tends to put a dot, but it's it's generally the same type of proportion, same kind of mouth thing and stuff like that. Okay, this is a much later uh, Batman, and this is when he start. It's much more streamlined. Uh, there is, like I said, a, a few less S curves, a lot more straights, and a lot more C curves. So this is a, it, essentially it's a straight, but it's, I mean, it's essentially it's a C curve, but it's, it could also play as a straight. This is definitely much more of a C curve. It's, it's almost not even an S curve anymore. Like he just didn't, he didn't use the S curve anymore. It's just, it's just cutting in like a, like a, like a, a, a C curve here. This is just a straight up C curve. In fact, this whole entire thing is just one C curve here. This is a straight. Um, it's straight. Then there's like a slight, small, very, very, very small C curve right here. But it's straight, straight uh, a C curve interior coming in. This then this is just straight, straight. This C curve is written, broken down into two, two. One straight, and then there's like a slight C curve here. It's not an S curve. In his older drawings, he would just he would have made this an S curve. He didn't. He this is just now like a straight, uh, like a, a very uh, sh almost straight C curve. This is an S curve. So this is like the one S curve curve so far that I've caught in this drawing. Then there's this. This is a very. This is a C curve with a very very sharp edge. This is yet an. There here's a here. No, it's a C curve. I was going to say it was an S curve, but it's not. This is an S curve. This goes in here and then it becomes an S. But this, and here's another S. So there is a, a few S curves in here, but it's mostly straights and mostly C curves. So uh, as he honed his design and really stylized it even more, he started even simplifying it even more. He started almost only using two types of lines, which is really interesting. And it still works and it's still really dynamic and it has still a lot of punch. Again, this is a little bit older, and uh, like Jack Kirby, I think this is, maybe it is a Jack Kirby, I don't know what, but um, it says Jack Kirby, Bruce Tim. So I don't know what this is. I don't know if he took a Jack Kirby drawing and then did his, did a marker rendering and, and an ink job over it himself and did his own thing, but um, uh, again, it's, it's, it's very Kirby inspired, it's very Kirby. Uh, Bruce Tim doing Kirby again, uh, doing a commandy drawing. It's even a Kirby face, uh, but at the same time, none of these draw, none of these lines here, n these these uh, are Kirby lines. Th this is Kirby calligraphy with Bruce Tim design on top of it, right? So you've got a straight, a complete straight. Then we have the C curve, uh, uh, an S curve, straight C curve. You know uh, the 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 Kirby kind of uh, hand, but extremely stylized so that to the point where it's just boxes for the fingers. Um, Kirby calligraphy everywhere, but Bruce Tim uh, design on top. So C curve, S curve. This this is an 
this is a bit of an S curve. It's almost a straight. Like if you take this and this is the straight, and then there's a C curve on it. I mean, uh, uh, it's highly, highly stylized. Uh, it's beautiful. Like like it's so good. Now here he is doing Steranko, um, which is really funny because you could, you could, you could see that that it's no long. He's no longer trying to do Kirby, and he is definitely channeling Steranko because Steranko tended to do these lumps on his drawings. He used to be much more organic, so this is and because Steranko did Nick Fury. And this is the way, these are kind of almost Steranko proportions where Steranko did these long, lanky legs. Remember in the, in the, in the previous video, like his drawings, like the, his humans tended to be a little bit longer. I didn't say that in the video, actually. I should, probably should have, but they tended to be a little bit longer. So you could tell that he, this is definitely aping much more of a Steranko uh, drawing especially because it's Nick Fury and and and, uh, and uh, Steranko put Nick Fury kind of like on the map very very stylized joker soup it, this is really great like it's just simplicity uh, even just like the shadows here and if you if you if you squint because you could actually see the line work and then he put he went in there with a with a black so uh, really, really beautiful, um, but again, straights, straights, C curves. Uh, this is actually a C curve here. J long, long C curve, and then there's this just generally. This is a, this is a, a C curve, but it's really, really shallow. It's almost a straight. Here we have another C curve here, but the but notice that when he does the C curve, he doesn't see how this C curve. Like when you think of a, of the letter C. You think of the peak of the C, like right, like near the middle, but these C's, like the peaks, are near the top. See how it, they peak near the top, and then the rest goes down, peak at the top, and then and this actually this is more like a straight. These are two straights. Um, this is more of a, a, a more natural C curve, while this would be like one that peaks up high. We have a C curve here, and it's a really big one. Uh, but we're countering it with a straight to add interest, right? Um, beautiful, beautiful hand. Th these things are tapering closer toward each other. Like it's, it, you want to have tapering. So one of the things that I should point out overall in in in, in all of these things is uh, one of the one of the the uh, good rules of thumb to design is to try to avoid parallel lines uh, when it comes to arms and legs uh, even in bodies but not too much not so much but when it comes to arms and legs um, you you want to uh, when you're laying them in uh, you want to have a slight taper as they get closer to the hand. To, to the hand. It's a, it, it could be a subtle taper, but it should be there, right? So from the shoulder all the way, if you're going to simplify an arm, you don't want a tube that's, that has parallel lines. You, what you want is a, is, a, is a slightly tapering tube that is, that is coming closer to as, as it goes to the hand. If you if you were to if you were to break down these these arms and into just two lines instead of one two like that right if you were just to go straight down notice that the tapering exists see here even in see the arm is tapering even the sleeve is tapering the legs are tapering down you can see it here too you can see it here too these are tapering 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 Everything, all the, all these arms and legs, they're all tapering. See, look, they're all tapering down. Uh, so this lumpy bumpy, these cuts, 
are there just to show anatomy, but really what we have, it, it, what the thrust of it is that if we were to draw a line, it would just come down all the way through, and it would just, and these are tapering lines that would come all the way down through and, and through. So uh, you want to keep that in mind. It's okay to have some lumps or whatever, and to define your anatomy uh, the way that Bruce Tim is doing it. It's it's extremely clear and simplified and beautiful and well designed, but on top of a, a unified uh, design principle, which mean which is uh, slightly tapering limbs. A beautiful, beautiful drawing of uh, of a, this is this is a little bit more of a, a Gene Colan uh, homage. Uh, Gene Colan, another artist I haven't talked about, but. Uh, he did Tomb of Dracula, and this is in basically what Gene Colan's uh, Dracula looked like. But, but it's more like he took Gene Colan, he added Kirby to it, and then stylized it like he does. Like uh, that's what this is. This is like this is a big mashup of three different uh, of three different artists: Gene Colan, Jack Kirby, and Bruce Tim, all kind of melding together into this beautiful Bruce Tim drawing that only Bruce Tim could do. Um, really, really great. Look at this hair. That one of the one of the amazing things about uh, it, it drives me crazy drawing trying to draw hair because I'm always trying to find these shapes. And to me, to me, it's really hard to find these really lyrical C S curves, right? Um, I but but like people like Bruce Tim, uh, Adam Hughes. Uh, there's a lot of artists that just when they draw hair and then they 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 do the the curves the the s curve designs like this they it, they just it's beautiful they they look so good and when i do it it always looks like it, they don't flow and i don't know why i don't know why it doesn't flow the way that it flows with them and i think it's just fantastic and i need to really practice that some more but i love this these negative shapes that he had, that 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 are created because of the black it, it it adds so much so much design and uh, the in, one of the things that uh, is is heavily Kirby based is that uh, he could have just as easily echoed. See how this this white shape is made like this. He could have echoed the white shape with the shadow. He could have made it exactly a duplicate, but he didn't because Kirby didn't do it. He Kirby would would make the shadow inside all lumpy and weird and add and make it make that shadow inside its own shape well there it is this is here's here's uh bruce tim doing exactly the same thing and it adds so much more interest to that shadow and look at this hand so look one of the things that i wanted to point i want to point out here you got to know your hand anatomy even in when you're doing something as simplified as a cartoon, right? So you've got these knuckles, and these knuckles have a, 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 a peak, a front plane, a side plane, and a back plane as it go and as it peaks back down. And you can and he simplifies it. It's very clear that this is that that's where it is. It's like there's like an invisible line right here, and then this this is coming back. This is moving forward, and then these lines are going in parallel with the plane of the knuckle. On top of that, we have a top plane to the finger, top, 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 and then here's the side plane of the finger. So it's actually a box. He's drawing this box. It's just a really uh, organic, stylized box that all, that wraps around these these um, uh, hand knuckles and phalanges and things, and it goes in corner and then it goes out let's see boom 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 it's but you can see here's the top plane top plane and then here this is the side plane right here top plane top plane top plane side plane and you can see some of the side plane on this side because he's got really bony fingers and so you can see the other side it's really good and then you these are like the the phalanges that come out and the bones that come out and and connect to these knuckles um, he obviously knows his hand anatomy. You can't fake hands. You always know a master artist 
because he draws hands really well. And if uh, and if you're going around hiding your hands or drawing really lousy hands, everybody knows you're an amateur. Like you just immediately come across as an amateur. Again, this is an extremely cartoony version of of a very Kirby Kirby drawing, and this is uh, seems to be a, a little bit more of a earlier a Bruce Tim drawing because he's using a lot of S curves. You can see the S curves. There's a lot of S curves in here. Here's an S curve. This is a, this is another S curve. This is an S curve. So you could always tell like here's another S curve. Uh, even this is an S curve. Uh, as he goes a lot later on, like I said, he he starts using more. Uh, just straights and C, and, and C curves, but um, very very Kirby, very very stylized. Very, it's the same kind of design uh, elements. And here, look at the look at this hand, S curve, S curve, S curve, S curve. And then look, it starts off really thin and thick, thin, thick, thin, thick, and it, and it, and it gives it depth. If you squint, you can you could feel that the 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 hands are are are, are thicker in the bottom. Um, a lot of power, a lot of power. Um, I think that um, later on, this is 03, I think he probably would have made this one line as, had he been doing this uh, later on. But it's still really fantastic. So much power. All, even like, like the, the, um, the wrinkles of the pants are just going this way it's, they're all going in this direction coming um, uh, to reinforce this punch reinforce this like you've got this leg and it comes out and this and this there's a there's a like you could basically draw a line from here all the way through down to here into this into this um, into this leg and then out, and then it comes in and out boom like it's like an S curve there's a, there's a there's an invisible S curve that comes in here. So we've got this here, this, and it's it's still it's it's really 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 powerful. And of course the the speed lines here, the power lines here. Very Kirby character designs with the nose and the mouth and the way it is, but all the shapes are pushed. Bigger, bigger uh, chests, smaller waists, uh, highly, highly tapered uh, limbs. Uh, that's re and, and simplified, simplified shapes here. Look at this. It's just a C curve, and then there's two C curves coming in. It's like it makes the letter B. You know, um, Kirby would have made it much more lumpy, much more. Michelin Man-esque. Uh, Bruce Tim really, really clearly simplifies so that it's just one C curve and then there's two C curves here to imply the entire shoulder and uh, tricep area and then the forearm area. Uh, the forearm area tends to have an S curve here and you, you've seen it in other drawings but he didn't do that here. He just he immediately simplified. He kept it much more simple, and I think that's what really is the most unique elements that Bruce Tim tended to to do in his drawings. A page from Ad Love. Uh, this is one of the best comics that you can have if you're studying to do comics, because of the way that Bruce Tim used blacks when he uh, told the story, the, the compositions that he used, the, the power and the punch of the drawings that he used. But it, it is a mas it's masterfully um, composed. And if you just want to see how to play with blacks so that you can get the most, one of, some of the best effects uh, you, you you possibly can so that things stand out. I highly recommend you buy that book, and I'm going to recommend I'm going to recommend a lot of books at the end of this video so that you can take them out, check them out, and and, and um, so. But this this is really really great. Look at the way that. So so here's what I'm talking about. This whole entire area is black, right? She has black too. She's got black, but um, 
it's the white that makes her pop out. And then because she has black, then she also stands out between this white. But this area here, your eye goes straight to Batman because he is in this white area. Again, this here is, is not important. What's important is here, so this is where the most contrast is. Here we have a black and white. It's not cut in half. The white area is, is better, but this whole entire area here is in contrast with the black. So your eye goes here because this is the area of more concentrated black, more concentrated and complex black and white. Uh, her face stands out because the rest, because black borders, borders her face. Here again, same thing. His mask is black, so he, you don't really have to do much as long as you just make sure that you don't add too much busy or noisy uh, elements here. This is all black so that these fish stand out. Very, very stylized here. Um, again, this is, I think, still... At this point, he's, he's starting to lose the S-curves. But yeah, we straight versus C-curve. Straight versus C-curve. Offset. C-curve, straight. Uh, complex S curve here this is uh, this is technically it's a it's a it's a C curve but it but it might as well be a straight because there's a small tiny curve right here but then the rest of it is straight uh, this is again um, it, it feels much more like a straight although it is a very mild C curve and part of the reason why it feels more like a straight is because this is a straight like this line this side of this line is straight this side of the line is curved so even within a shadow shape he has designed it with straight versus curve and it actually adds interest this is thick thin thick and that adds interest to the design of the shadow this is not a straight across go it does this kind of wiggly thing and really this doesn't really adhere to anything the it's it's a kirby ism uh where uh kirby because naturally you would probably just want to do a straight line all the way across kirby then to just do a little wiggly wiggly line just make things not be as simplified as that and then because of that it adds a, it make creates a very interesting shadow and but this line here is actually is representing two muscle the muscle wrapping around here and the and the corner of the knee uh, so now it looks like there's a box and it adds a lot of dimension so uh, there's a there's kind of like a method to the madness one is int adding interest even though the shadow probably would have just followed suit it should have been echoing the C curve but instead they did, he did a little little bit of a curvy Kirby is ism here and um, and broke this shadow into two complex shapes just to make it less parallel and add more interest. Look at the straight. This is a straight, and then we got C curve, C curve, C curve, S curve. So straight, straight, S curve. C curve, C curve, and this C curve is smaller than this C curve, so now we don't have uh, repetition. And then this is an S curve, and then this is a longer straight than this straight, so we don't have repetition. Uh, this S curve peaks in a different spot than this one; it's slightly offset. And this is actually an S curve here, and it's and, the, and it goes into like almost a straight. Uh, really great design. Notice how he avoided doing a tangent here. It, this, this line, it, this edge of the line does not connect to the, to the mask. He made sure that they were that this ended up somewhere inside this shape, so it doesn't tangent and and flatten out the drawing. It's just beautiful and it, and it totally looks like a Kirby drawing too which is hilarious oh here's that drawing again I don't I have it here twice great action a lot of energy this is really worth uh, looking at because this is kind of like the modern version of of that page of 
Captain America fighting the, the, the guy. Well, this is essentially the Bruce Tim version of the same kind of a thing. Uh, and there's and it's got just as much energy and power as that uh, Kirby drawing. <laughs> Look at that. So much energy. And, 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 and in, it's in part with stuff like this, where you, you've got this really hard uh, push, where it's almost a straight all the way through. And then you've got this kind of line that goes all the way through. And it is broken up into it, when, it, when it hits some of these um, uh, wrinkles. But really what it is, is it subliminally is that it's all one line all the way through and it goes in here like that boom and it, but this is a, this is a, a, a another principle of, of design uh, that that um, that really kind of uh, creates interest when you're drawing and that is this you have a complex side and a simple side a complex side and a simple side you know, there's there's less, far less detail on this side than there is on this one. There's there's much more complexity, much more lumpy bumps. There's much more lumpy bumps and starts and stops here. And then this one is extremely simple. And what the where where do you put the complexity and where do you put the simplicity? Well, you put the complexity where there is a pinch. So, uh, say you have you, you you have a hand and then you go like this. Where would you put the complexity? Here, because this is where the pinch is, and then here is where the, the, the least amount of, com this is where the, the stretch of everything is happening. So you could simplify this into one line while keep making all the interesting lumpy bumps in here. So what that does is, it, 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 again, it adds interest by through contrast. Uh, and it adds much more power to the bend of whatever is bending. So, for example, this is a bend, boom, and you got boom, 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 all this stuff. And then over here, we got complete, complete simplicity. It's just boom, boom, that's it. There is no, oh, look at all the wrinkles, da, da, da. No, it, there isn't anything. It's just boom, boom, straight, you know. Here again, straight line, and then there's complexity here. You're breaking up all the shapes here. So that, that's what you're looking for. Pinch side, complex, uh, I mean, a, a straight, uh, simple side, you know. Uh, very, it's it's worth noting when, when we're talking about this and you and I'm talking about design. There's also there's that sort of thing all the time. Like even here, in this drawing here, you've got uh, the pinch side's got a lot of complexity going on, and the uh, and the the stretch side is all simple. The only breaking of that rule right right in that, right here is this, this this side is the is the is the simple side, but we've got this happening with the coat. This would be the complex side, but you can't see it. And finally, we have a Bruce Tim girl here. Um, for the most part, Bruce Tim tends to generally draw women. But uh, here again, this is, this is a gorgeous, gorgeous drawing. Look at these guys so much texture in in these in these in these characters but look at the it's still the same really pushed design he doesn't it's not it's not just the the anatomy and trying to draw the anatomy he like really just pushes it and makes it really strong um emphasizes exaggerates it uh, look at this. It's it's clearly just a box with with a tube sticking out of it. But even within that framework of fingers, he knows exactly where to put the uh, the um, the C curves the, the the to break up the C curves in order to make it an anatomical. We got an S curve here, an S curve here, an S curve here. Uh, C a C curve, but extremely shallow. That we've got and and here's the straight straight versus uh, complex. The simple versus complex, we've got, this is the simple side. So uh, usually there is a rib cage here and then he could have just put the rib cage and then it would have been go come down into an S curve and then it would have gone into the belly. He didn't do that, it's just one straight line. That's the simplicity. Here's the complex side where it's boom, boom. We've got a corner here, boom, boom. And this is the complex side. This is about as complex as he got in this drawing. Um, he could have added a little bump here as, as the as the skin uh, pinches, but he didn't. 
he's stylizing it. He's making, he's streamlining the drawing. Uh, this line, by the way, goes in through here and all the way through. It doesn't stop. Just because there's a leg in the way doesn't mean that this is one. This isn't one long line. It goes into an S curve. I mean, it goes into a C curve here, and there's a C curve, C curve, C curve, C curve all the way here until it becomes an S curve. Even this comes in and come through, and then you can you can basically draw a line all the way through into here. And that's what makes it work. And then here we got this line here, and it goes in through here across, and then you could even follow it all the way across into this other arm. Uh, that's what the, that that's what's called rhythm. It, it it unifies the flow of a drawing and makes it feel cohesive. It makes it feel of a whole rather than a bunch of parts. And you kind of want the, these invisible lines throughout your drawing, uh, where you have this 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 line coming here and connecting. To, to like the face which comes in here and goes in through here like th that sort of thing you, you you want you want this to come in through here and then, and then connect over here like that you want this to come in through here and then and connect and have the have to, to the breasts here and then all the way through here you want the the these these lines here to also connect and go all the way across and and connect to the arm here you want this line to connect and go through and then come back down into the body. That, that all that stuff. It's like this, where where you have these lines here, and they're all kind of flowing into each other, and but they're all kind of pointing and, and wrapping around the figures that are in the drawing. The, this guy is is coming in and around, and it's flowing into him, into him, and he's looking across. And you want these kind of feel feelings that are just everything is one connected unit. Uh, you you want to connect invisibly connect all the stuff like the way that he's doing it here. But look, it's a, it's a very simplified knuckle. You could just put you could do exactly the same thing um, that he he would did here with all the, k k k k k k k but he didn't. It's just like and that's it. Like there's like a, there's an S curve here and a C curve, and then you're basically done. There's another uh, C curve here and a bunch of C curves. And and the and here. Okay, so let's take a look at look at take a look at this hand. So I want you to look at the rhythms of the of these uh, fingers. So uh, if you were drawing a hand, a lot of a lot of us would draw try to draw the hand so that uh, the the knuckles would be like just straight, straight, straight. Uh, so they would look like um, like uh, like uh, piano piano keys, you know, just like that. But that's not how knuckles work. Um, knuckles tend to tend to. Uh, have a rhythm and they tend to go this way. They have like a rhythm that moves away that way. And here it is. That's what this is an exaggerated version of this rhythm. They're all coming in and across. So they're not piano keys. They're coming in and rapping that way. There's just it's just beautiful work. It just drives me crazy when I look at this stuff because it's just there's so much beautiful simplicity and a lot of this stuff just comes it just happens um, you, you, you've you've um, you've internalized it to, su to such an extent that you're just able to just put it down just like that very easily that's Bruce Tim okay that's Bruce Tim I, that, that's all the drawings I've got like if I'm, I'm going right back to the beginning yeah so uh, okay so let me talk about some of the books that I would recommend if you want to further study his work all right so I'll begin with this book here it's called Batman animated uh, this book talks about the Batman animated TV show and uh, the development of it and things like that. But what's great about it, it's got storyboards, it's got all the development stuff and you can see like the artwork and, and stuff like that. But it, you also see where the character designs came from, like you, early designs of Harley Quinn, you get storyboards, uh, covers, uh, pencil drawings, uh, you, different things like that, like you, you, early character design. So you could see how how the Bruce Tim kind of style developed, and there's just like there's a lot of really good things in here. 
and it's really worth checking out. And then at the very end, you get uh, where where stuff started, uh, the, the redesigns of the characters, uh, the more simplified version of the characters, uh, the dick, the the the, the, uh, the sprang uh, version of the characters, the Dick Sprang is that his name, Dick Sprang. Um, so yeah, so here we go. So yeah, good stuff, good stuff. Highly recommend it. Um, every single book that I'm going to recommend, I have a, uh, uh, I have a an affiliate link to Amazon in the description of this video, just so that you could very easily find it. And I'll probably get like a cent or two for, for, uh, for, if you buy it through that, uh, through that link. Uh, here's another book that I highly recommend: Bruce Tim Modern Masters, Volume Three. So uh, one of the reasons why this is a really good book to, to have is because it talks, see here's the, it, in, this is where he talks about his influences. So we got Frazetta over here, we got Steranko over there, we got uh, uh, Dan DiCarlo over here. So like all the, you know, like all his influences, his early drawings, his early work, and, and you, can, you can see how it slowly developed and became what, what we know. And uh, he just talks about art and, and things like that. And it's got great art and highly, highly recommend this book too. Okay, so this book and the book in the comic that it's based on. So I'm going to link to uh, uh, Batman Mad Love, which is one of the best uh, Batman comics ever done, uh, but it was co-written by Bruce Tim and it was and Paul Dini. But it was drawn by Bruce Tim, and you can see the uh, the in, in the version that I that I'm linking to. It's like the deluxe version. I have the the original uh, 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 comic, but so you could if you don't want a deluxe version, you could just get the original comic. But then I also bought this. This is the Batman Mad Love starring Harley Quinn, featuring Harley Quinn coloring book. Uh, I got this because I I'm like, what is this? And then I open it up. And it's all in black and white. I'm not going to color this. I just wanted it for the black and white version of Mad Love. So you get to see uh, the w what I was talking about where playing with... So like the final comic is in color. But this is a black and white version of the comic. And uh, if you really want to, to see how... Uh, what, what a good way of playing with blacks is and how to... How to compose with blacks? Uh, this, this, the, it's a coloring book is great. So I'm, I, I, I'll have a link to that. Okay, so here's, uh, I debated about whether or not I should talk about this book. Uh, I'm not going to open it because uh, I don't want, because uh, there's there's stuff in here that is. Um, Probably not safe for YouTube. Okay, so here, but the, but the reason, the reason I um, okay, well I'll open it to the the um, the, the pages that that are safe for YouTube. Like um, this book is is, a, but the the reason I I debated about whether or not I wanted to talk about this book isn't because of the content of the book. In fact. I highly recommend this. These marker paintings are amazing. Like you can learn so much just looking at the way he. It's cartoons, and but he's using marker and he's he paints amazing. Okay, so this is such an awesome, awesome book. Uh, however. It's out of print, and it's been out of print for years. If you actually want a copy of this, you're going to have to pay two, three, four, five hundred dollars to buy this book. That's why I didn't. I debated about whether or not I should even bring it up. Okay, this book, this particular book, the 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 big thick one. Okay, this is the one I'm talking about. 
the one that you can buy on Amazon that I'm linking to is the Pocket Edition. The Pocket Edition is missing five uh, uh, hundred pages. Okay, so imagine this book missing a hundred pages, and that's the Pocket Edition. You could buy that, but you can't buy this one. This is the one with a hundred pages that are not missing from the Pocket Edition, which is going to cost you an arm and a leg. Okay, so that's the bad news. You could The bad news being that you could only get the Pocket Edition at an okay price. Even that's gotten kind of expensive. The good news is that this year, I, uh, according to Amazon, in August, they're, release, they're releasing a brand new Bruce Tim book that's going to be like this, and it's called The Big Tease. And it's going to be coming out from the same publisher, Fleck Publishing. Uh, you could pre-order it now on Amazon. As of the time of this recording, uh, I link to it in the description of my video. But and it's 32, 35 bucks, something like that. So it's better than $500, right? So uh, that's the good news. Uh, so there, so if you're a big Bruce Tim fan, uh, the books that I just showed you, 100% recommend you get all of these books. Um, they'll just feed your Bruce Tim fandom. It's it's uh, the guy's artwork is is amazing and inspiring, and um, and a lot of people have been so inspired by him in the same way that so many people have been inspired by Kirby, that uh, they've been using his calligraphy to do their own work, while at the exact same time building on it and, and developing it and going and doing their own thing with any of the stuff. The same way that that Bruce Tim uh, would uh, would take would, would basically take Kirbyisms and, and apply them into his own art. Uh, other people have taken Bruce Timisms and applied it into their own art, and uh, we'll be talking about some of them in the next few episodes. Uh, but again, Bruce Tim, great artist, worth uh, studying, worth getting inspired by. And I hope you've gotten a lot out of this video, and I'll talk to you next time. All right, bye.